Peggy 3. Hello everybody, I'm James Alcott and I'm here at Sports Interactive today to learn about the five key headline features for Football Manager 2023. Once again, I'll be speaking to several people within the studio to discuss this year's new additions, the work that goes into bringing them together and how these features will improve your FM experience. First up is a man who needs no introduction, studio director, Miles Jacobson. Miles, good to see you again. Great to see you too. Um, welcome, although really you should be welcoming me. Um, let's talk about the working practices when it comes to FM23, because a year ago we spoke and the world was a very, very different place. How has it changed for you? Well, it's been another interesting, challenging year for sure. I mean, you know, the pandemic, um, some people think it's over, but it's still been affecting us as a studio. We've still had people off most weeks during it and um, we have once again had another year of growth and hiring lots of new people in, into the studio which has been awesome it's always good to have uh, good to have new colleagues and some of those have been working on FM23 some of them are working on on future projects as well but it, it's also been a year um, of success for us um, FM22 has been played by more people than have played an, an FM game before. Um, with well over three million people playing the game, we've sold a couple of million um, copies of it as well, which is great. That means we get to make another one, which is awesome. That's, that's why we're still here today. Recruitment has been one of the most enhanced areas of FM23. Um, how has real life for you sort of inspired those changes? Because FM is always a bit of a snapshot of of football in that moment in time. So we talk a lot about how we talk to football clubs about data and and um, the way that they're using data have done for many, many years. But what we've done in the last couple of years is actually spoken to them more about how they are using the, the data directly. So from their perspective, how they are looking at finding players um, with the data that they have, rather than how we can help them find players with our data. Um, so we've spent a lot of time talking to people who work in recruitment in football clubs, which we've always done anyway. But um, as the studio's grown, rather than it being me or a few other people in the studio who know people at clubs going and talking to them, we've tried to bring that closer to everyone in the studio. And so every month we interview someone from the football world but do it very differently to the way that journalists do it. Because journalists want to find headlines and stories to be able to put out there to get people to click on their articles, right? And, and to go and watch them. Whereas what all we're interested in is real life football and the features that we are working on. So we basically ask these people, and they might be managers, they might be data analysts, um, coaches, uh, we had England under 21 manager, the other week directors of football, we're asking them questions directly about what they do that are specific to features that we're working on, some of which are in FM23, some may be in future games if we get to make them, um, which, which hopefully we will do. <laughs> um, and it's become a really important thing inside the studio. So with the, with the recruitment features, it's been a case of talking to people who are scouts, people who are um, recruitment analysts, people who actually buy and sell the players on a daily basis, so the directors of football, the technical directors, the sporting directors, but trying to get much closer to the reality of the day-to-day -day of what goes on in those departments. But also, how often do you have meetings with the manager? How often do you have meetings with the owner? And the different structures that go on in football. So that's been a really important um, part of, of what we've wanted to look at but I'm not going to tell you how it works in the game because I'm going to let Cyrus do that instead. Absolutely so lovely to chat to you uh, again I'm excited to play the game myself and excited to talk about these new features with some of some of your your guys uh, in the next few minutes. Uh, thanks for chatting with me. Thanks. Right then guys, let's get into the juicy new features. Cyrus joins me right now, uh, game designer, and uh, you've got some good stuff here to, to tell me about. Four key aspects, guys, that we're gonna talk about here. Cyrus, 
Let's kick off with the first one. We've got three key elements and then something that brings it all together right at the end. So stick around, guys. First up is the squad planner. Tell us about the squad planner. Yeah, so the squad planner, uh, as you would guess from the name, it's all about helping you plan your recruitment out for the season. So if we take a step back and think about, how, you know, why did we bring in the squad planner? We were trying to assess how a, how a manager looks at recruitment, what are the key stages of, of that process for them. So the way it'll work is we've got a brand new area, squad planner. When you go to it, what you're going to see is your whole team, right? And then ev based on your tactic, every single position, you're going to have all the players ranked in terms of how good they are. And it's important to know this is kind of like a safe space, right? So it's like your secret book, right? Your, your key striker is not going to get upset when you put him fifth ranked because he'll never know. Right, but your staff will know, and they can then start making you know suggestions based on what your planner looks like. So you go in, you can rank all your players, you can see how they look, you can start visualizing where you're strong, maybe where you're weak, and as the planner suggests, start planning for that season. Um, some of the really cool things is a bit like a, a dream team when you're planning. It's maybe not just the players. Maybe you've got long-term targets that you're thinking, how would my team look based around this new midfielder? So anyone on your shortlist can be brought into your planner at any time. So you add a player to your shortlist, you bring them into your planner, you can rank them, see how they compare to your, your current team. But also we do that with youth, right? So any youth player that you've got, you can bring in and see. And talking about youth, we don't only have a current season planner, we have a next season planner and a season after planner. Right, so you can be thinking long term, how is my team going to look in two seasons time from now? The idea is hopefully you've given you as much information as possible so you can really make a great assessment which can help you lead into that next phase which is planning out exactly what you're going to do with your resources. I really loved the way it looks. When I yeah. saw it, I was like, ah, oh, I get it. It's all intertwined you know, under this umbrella of recruitment that's had a real shot in the arm this year with the game. Let's talk about scouting because that's the second one um, that we really want to dive into and there's a whole raft of changes here. First one, recruitment focuses. It, there's been a, a real change on this one, isn't there? So the idea is now we've switched from assignments to this concept of recruitment focuses. So they work in a very similar way. Your, your chief scout, if you leave them fully responsible, will base off setting up different focuses based on what they think is best. At any time you can come in and say, I want this focus set up, and you can set a bunch of parameters, position, role, PACA, height, a bunch of different things, and they will then go off and start searching for that type of player. Because essentially you're saying this is a, an ability to provide trusted delegation to, to, uh, to your team, which is, is a big part of FM these days. It's not just you anymore because the game's moved on. So. In terms of it affecting your inbox, which because sometimes there are, you know, I'm guilty of it myself at times, going da 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 yeah. There will be, there's going to be a strong effect on the inbox? Yeah, well, the idea is to just reduce the noise a little bit, right? As you said, you get that, what we call sometimes called like space bar fever, right? Like, you know, 25 reports, you know, first two, three, maybe you pay attention to, but like most things, by the 23rd, uh, you know, I'm, I'm clicking through. You know so, me so well. Yeah, right? So the idea is now that your inbox is is something that we should be careful about what we put in there, right? So the idea is your staff have done their due diligence, they've hit, they've hit the maximum they're going to know on a player, and then they say, this is everything we've got on this guy. It's up to you now, based on this information, where you want to go. So percentages have gone? So percentages have gone completely, yeah. We, we no longer say this guy's at 88% player knowledge. And the main reason for that is we just want it to be super clear about how far along in the internal scouting process you are. So previously you could scout a player and he could get to 30% and maybe you've spent two weeks on scouting that player, but then there might be another player that you've done no scouting on, on 65%. That might be because his reputation's super high or they're playing in the same league as you so you naturally know more about them. And we felt that Sometimes that's a bit disconnecting, especially when you're sifting through reports. You're like, well, how much longer has I got left to go? Do we, should I just space bar and wait? You know, so what we wanted to make it sure is that we make it really clear how far along the process you are so that you know which information is actionable. So you get hit your inbox, you get told this is an extensive report, meaning we're not going to be doing anything more on this. Now it's up to you. Do you want to make this decision or not? Essentially, the scouts now do four key stages of checks. 
you set up a focus or your head scout sets up a focus and now your team will go grab a big bunch of players that potentially fit that and at each of the four stages they're going to find out a little bit more about these players and start whittling that list down so by the end of it you've got a, a more refined list of players that have all hit extensive reports that fit what you've been asking for or what your chief scout thinks you need what it allows us to do is give you players that more fit what you're needing but also it gives us this nice ability to say at the last stage we now have this concept of near misses so when you go to your scouting center um, we've revamped how that looks right so now you go there you have an overview page which gives you a great bunch of information you get some recommended players we've even put like a sort of guided direction maybe you're not sure what you should be doing you can get little tips maybe you want to hire more scouts maybe you want this focus might be finished maybe you want to set up a different type but when you go to the recruitment focus page specifically, you can select any of the focuses that are set up and you can, when they're complete, you can hit what we call near misses. And these are guys that have dropped out at the last second. So potentially from whatever criteria you've set, they've just missed out, bit too tall, bit too short, bit too old. You know, maybe you've asked for guys that hit 80% pass completion rate and this guy hit 74. So then it gives you a chance that if no one in that list is really doing it for you, you can go to this extra place and see, oh, okay, you know, maybe I thought I really wanted something, but, but this actually is now, you know, I'm, I'm happy to compromise. So you're catering for, you know, the laissez-faire FM managers, but also those guys who want that, that control that, you know, no one's missing, you know, through the net. You've got people with those near misses. Yeah, um, exactly. Let's move on to part three of this, which is agents. Now, we've chatting with Miles about how, you know, real life, Oh, real football is always being implemented into the game. You're always analysing the game itself to try and make FM as immersive as possible. And agents have become a stronger and stronger part of it. And you've moved it on again. Their influence is, is being seen in, in, in this game this year, isn't it? I mean, agents can be a bit controversial. Like, love them or love them, they're a huge part, especially of top league They're not football. going anywhere, are they? Yeah. They're not going anywhere at all. And the reality is, any any deal to do with a top player i mean any contract transfer that agent's the first point of contact that's that's who gets called first to see how it's going to go so what we've done is evolve that so now when you go talk to an external player and you talk to their agent and you say are you interested they give you some ballpark ideas we now added a next step where you can bat back a little bit so say they they you really like a player and his agent's saying this is the sort of wage they're looking at. And you just know for a fact you're never going to be able to afford that wage. You can now say, this looks great, but we're just never going to come to terms on this wage. And then it depends you know, on the agent and the player's interest. So you get this little back and forth to see if you can come to sort of initial sort of understanding. Because it's, it's all great going to talk to an agent, but if, they just, if there's something you know you're never going to be able to hit, it's nice to just be able to say, is there any compromise here that we can do? So again, we've essentially brought that functionality to your own players. If you want to renew a contract with one of your own players, talk to their agent. And just like external players, they'll give you a feel. Oh, he'd be happy to for this sort of package. It's like getting the feelers out. That's what we want to make sure that this is, there's nothing like officially locked in here. Okay. This is just a light touch. Taking them out to dinner, aren't you? You're, yeah. You know, you're schmoozing a little bit. I see. Exactly. Nice. I can tell. I can tell it. You're right. Your eyes have changed a lot there. As <laughs> I get what you're talking about. Let's get on to the fourth uh, feature here because it kind of brings it all back together again. And, and something you talk about the uh, implementation and impact of agents and how you started there and you've moved it forward. And I think that's the same with a lot of elements of the game. But recruitment meetings debuted in FM21. Um, how are you taking it forward uh, this year? Meetings are a tough one in general, right? Like, like real life, any meeting that doesn't have a designated purpose or ends with actionable information, you, you know, you kind of feel like it was a waste of time. And the more of those you have, the less likely you want to go to the next one. So we really tried to think, why should you spend your time in this meeting? What can we do? And specifically with the recruitment meeting, we realized that we have to adapt. And these recruitment meetings need to be bespoke for the stage of the, the season you're in. So we, we broke it down into three. First thing we're gonna do is show you the new planner. This is how it's set up. Do you, are you happy with it? Do you wanna tinker with it? You know, just give you an introduction to this, this new part of the game that exists. And then the last part of that is, here's what your staff think you should be focusing on in terms of recruitment focuses. Here's the ones they're gonna set up. 
do you want to set up any additional ones yourself? Because right now, the very first recruitment you go into, three or four days into your job, we're hitting you with players you might want to sign. It's a lot to ask, you know, new to the job. So that's why, you know, you're no longer going to get that in your first recruitment meeting. When you finish the meeting, your staff are going to go execute, right? So then a few weeks after that, you're going to get another meeting, which is the review meeting. And that, as the name sounds, they're just going to explain to you, here's how we found based on the focuses, here's potentially who you've signed, so a focus that may no longer be relevant. And also players maybe you've been trying to sell. Here's the three players you've been trying to sell, two of them we've managed to offload. So you get a, just an update on how things are going, and based on that, maybe you want to change your plan a little. And then the final one is transfer deadline day. So we, we obviously improved that a lot last year. And now you have essentially a very quick update meeting, transfer deadline days for coming. Let's quickly review what we're still missing. Out of the focuses you've set, we've signed no one. Out of the players you've listed, you've sold no one, right? So deadline day. Maybe when you get that news item now, you should probably click accept because we need to maximize. But on the flip side, I've hit everything I need to hit. You know what? When that meet deadline day comes around, I can happily sit back and sit that one out. So exciting times when it comes to recruitment, be it if you want a bit more chaos or you want a bit less chaos, either way, it's in your hands. Yeah, for sure. Just trying to give you as much, as much control as you want you know, to, to play it your way. Essentially, that's what football managers are about, right? Creating your own story. So we just want to empower you as much as possible to be able to shape that story however you think. So once you've used all those recruitment tools, you've got yourself a few wonder kids, a few experienced pros, and you've got a world-class team together, you want to get onto that pitch and see how they perform. And so now we move on to one of the goats, of course, Nick Madden, who's had a promotion, by the way. Now senior match engine producer, Nick Madden, and lead match uh, QA analyst CJ Ramson to talk about the match, the match engine, and so much more. This is a juicy bit, guys. This is exciting, so stick around. You got a lot of love for the game last year, which is nice, isn't it? Oh. Um, how do you feel about that, and, and what can we expect this year? Yeah, it was like absolutely phenomenal, the reception last year to all of the features and just the, still the amount of players that are playing FM22. We're incredibly proud. So many people scoring a load of goals, sort of tearing up the script themselves. And yeah, it's about us this year. Again, trying to beat ourselves. It, it's, it's so difficult yet so rewarding to work on something that is never finished because mm. um, we're, we're iterating every year upon the match engine and yeah we want to take it to those extra levels so for fm23 we spent the majority of our cycle working on our ai managers so we like a football manager we look at every single manager across the world so we have a thousand scouts all across the world that are looking at the different data points of all the managers so we want to simulate those managers in the best way best way possible so we want them to have their tactical styles be reflected in the match engine and in the AI simulation. So the AI managers are essentially all of those managers across the world and how we represent them, how we represent their playing style and overall how they play within the simulation world. Now our AI managers, they can select the right formation, they can select the right tactical instructions to hopefully go into that tactical battle with not just the human manager, but also the other AI managers. Wow. Because we're simulating thousands upon thousands and millions upon millions of matches all in the background. So we want to make sure that that simulation world is both believable, realistic, and when you're playing in a match, you feel like there's that tactical battle, you feel like you're being tested, but also, you know, that the AI manager is is representing what we're getting from the data. In terms of that sophistication, that's where you come in when it comes to the testing, I would imagine, CJ. How, how extensive is that? Tell me about your, your role here at FM. So the main part of my role within the team is to kind of lead the team in making sure that our testing and the final match engine is as close to real life as we can get. So we watch a lot of real football, um, obviously in our spare time, casually but also at work during meetings we'll have meetings where we watch a full match of football um, and it won't just be looking at the scoreline or attacking defensive play we'll really break it down so how does this team press we'll compare a low block to a high press we'll compare different types of manager style to really see is that reflected in game and does football manager look as close to real life as possible 
Um, along with watching real football as well, we also watch a lot of the match engine, not just playing the game ourselves, but also as a team. We'll be watching matches, breaking them down and trying to find where we can make improvements from that. That feeling of um, it being real is quite an elusive term for you to sort of try and get to grips with and then apply within to a game. So in terms of to, to try and get across that reality from one to you know, a, a video game, how tough is that for you each year? How much, you know, how much are you watching? As we're all fans of football, we all know how random football can be. You never know, an underdog can be a big team or a big team can have 20 shots a game. And, and you never want to lose that, do you? You never want well. to, but in real life it, it happens. You can have the high XG, you can have the high expected score, but sometimes you just don't win. So trying to reflect all these things, but also reflect how some of the top teams play with a variety of styles at the same time. Um, it's difficult to get the balance, but it's something I feel in recent years, and especially this year, we've managed to get looking really good. One of the main things we really wanted to do was improve the defensive side of the football. As much as everyone loves to go forward and press high and attack, we also want you to be able to kind of sit in a low block and be able to soak pressure and counter-attack as well, so you have the tools to be able to defend as well as attack. And one of the main things we really wanted to improve was how teams can soak up pressure and then attack on the transition and attack on the break. So you're kind of utilising that example of that trend of the, the defensive nature of it. I know that's something that's changed with the, the game. Also, I, I think I've certainly seen it, is that there, has, there is an evolution of language when we talk about football. Mm. And I think FM are, are a huge part of that in terms of understanding how things work, analytics, which is a big part of last year's game. Um, so talk to me about that, because there, there are some changes in, one, the wording, but also the, the defensive tactical instructions as well. Yeah, so this year we've, we've, we've added in a lot of more instructions to the defensive side. So when our player base, as soon as they load up FM23, they go to the out of possession tactics, they're going to see a change straight off the bat. Um, the first one is really trying to simplify the line of engagement and the terminology that's used because we feel that it's really hard to get across what a much higher line really is and what that represents. Um, so we, we thought, well, why don't we simplify this, but also make it more football specific, make it more the language that you're hearing on television and by um, real life managers and interviews. So we've gone for that low block, mid block and high press. So we've simplified that, but also it enables the, the end like user of the game to have more control. When it comes to the players themselves, then um, talk to me about that. We're talking about formation and those broad strokes. What about the players themselves? So yeah, we've, we've made honestly, numerous of changes to FM23's match engine and our players' decisions. Um, I guess I'll start at the back. So our goalkeepers now, they have the ability to do K blocks and spread spreads and spread blocks. So our goalkeepers will now look bigger, more intimidating in those one-on-one -on -one situations. So it's about them feeling a lot more natural, playing like that goalkeeper that you see, that world-class goalkeeper. They're also much better with the ball at their feet. Um, and the setups um, for goal kicks, both short and long, we've had to make a lot of adjustments and a lot of improvements there. Um, I think the biggest improvement that people will see is how, how well defenders deal with the ball aerially um, and how they look to adjust their body position to make that header, the trajectory of that defensive header as well. The main thing that I, I found um, like brilliant this year with our defensive play is not just the pressing, but also the sort of the back pressure I feel like in previous FMs, like the, the, the midfielders or the attackers, they didn't really feel that pressure behind them as much. It feels now that with the, the, press, the pressing angles that we've really improved and also the way that players do tackle, so they won't just go for that slide tackle hell for leather every time. Like they will look to try and, can they intercept? Can they block? Can they poke that ball away? Um, so it, it's a lot more nuanced and yeah, especially with that defensive stability they look to, oh, I can quickly nip in there. Oh, I'll quickly step in and get that interception and then we can break. So yeah, it will feel a lot more realistic that those breakups in play and that like sort of chaotic nature of that like midfield zone. That's what we really tried to replicate this year is the chaos of football, not just the pretty tiki taka like it is about like, making the, the engine feel believable. As we spoke about the animation engine last year and I remember your face lighting up as <laughs> you had to tell me about it. What's happening this year with the with the animation engine? 
Yeah, so talking about the animation engine last year, I was so excited because it was the foundations. Like the, the new engine was the foundations for us to go forward. And this year we have overhauled all of our on-ball actions. So last year we touched a bit on it with the dribbling first touches. We have overhauled the selection criteria for every single action that you have on the, in the game, on the ball, so that it really looks at anything where it could be your, the ball incoming speed, the ball outgoing speed, where the ball is coming from, where it needs to go next. Hopefully our fans will see the, the, the kicks now, any sort of pass, finish. There's a lot more variety in there, but also it feels a lot like more realistic to the, to the context of what's going on. You know, a player playing it with the outside of the foot versus the inside of the foot. There's been so much collaboration with our AI team and the animation team because, you know, the first time that I've, you know, as an FM player for so many years, seen a player chest and volley within the same action, like bang, bang, and it looks a more, lot more realistic. Um, so yeah, I'm so proud of both what the animation team have been able to deliver and their collaboration with the AI changes and being welcoming of, we're making these AI changes, we need it to look good as well. I guess the final question for, for me to ask you guys is with that all in place, what would you say to fans of FM? Can they be excited this year? It just feels a lot more real to me and I'm really excited about it. Our testing team are much harsher than even people in the public. So we have very high standards of ourselves. So we want it to be the best yet for our fans. FM23 is on its way, as is the UEFA club competitions being fully licensed in this new game. Danny Quinn, the licensing producer, and Rhea Graf, the junior game designer, join me now to celebrate that fact. Uh, Danny, talk to me about when you get a new license uh, in FM and, and what that entails. Sure, well, I mean, we've already got 600 odd clubs licensed in the game, 50 competitions. So generally, we have a template to follow when we get a new licensor on board. It means that, um, you know, we, we know that we're gonna have logos, kits, match balls, tier dressings and peri perimeter boards, all those sort of things that help uh, make things look more authentic. Um, with UEFA, we realised that if we follow that template, we're actually quite limited on what we can, can do. Immediately it was, how can we make this special? How can we incorporate this into a feature uh, or multiple features? And really kind of maximise the, the value, not just for us, but for the, the user as well. Is there any other visual elements you immediately think of with, with uh, UEFA competitions? Well, so I guess two things. One at the start of the game, one at the end of the game. One would be how the players come out. Again, you kind of utilise that music within that. So I'm intrigued to know if that, that's become a part of it. But I guess that I'm a stickler for trophy lifts. They've got to be done right. And yep. is, is that, are either of those going to be sort of affected by this? Yeah, both. So oh. player walkouts, you're looking at the match day props. So things like... You think of the Champions League, you think of the star ball in the centre circle. Um, and that's the same with all of their competitions. We're making sure those are included in the walkouts. Uh, with trophy lifts, we've got bespoke trophy podiums for each of those competitions this year. So each of those will feel, look and feel like the real thing when, when you're there, or as much as we can do. Mm -hmm. uh, and then even down to things like sleeve patches. So we've had to incorporate and this is, this is the benefit as well. We're looking for something that's going to maximise the, the licence and find those opportunities. But some of those extra opportunities trickle into our other licences as well. So um, we're having to have sleeve patches that um, are dynamically changed depending on the competition you're in. By having that uh, feature in, having that technology available to us, functionality, it means that we can apply that. You mentioned QPR and on your save. If you leave the championship, you'll no longer wear the championship sleeve patch. If you were get to get relegated, you'd wear a League One sleeve patch. I might patch. do that. Yeah. <laughs> but we didn't need but to even go down if you got promoted right? as well, you still get the Carabao Cup ones. In <laughs> but it's, it's those that are uh, making sure that they all dynamically show the correct competition you're in as well, because mm. we wanted to make sure that was possible for the Champions League. That functionality is there. It's there for promotion relegation. And even if you are the winner of the Champions League, the following season you wear the winner's sleeve patch oh, as well. Oh, do you? So there's these like, gorgeous little touches, isn't there, that you're just able to sort of just go forth with. That's, I guess, obviously what you do with it all. How's it been working with the UEFA brand? I mean, it's obviously such an amazing opportunity. It's this big brand. Everyone in football knows that everyone wants to reach the Champions League when they play football manager. 
So to have the opportunity to take some of that excitement and add it to our game has just been so great. We were talking about the cup draws before we started filming and you were saying some lovely stuff about that that feeling of celebration and what it will bring this year. Talk to me about that. So what we really wanted to do was just add a greater sense of um, excitement, celebration, and make it more of an occasion that is closer to what you might expect from a real life draw. So we really wanted to move away from just the list that appears sometimes in the game and make it a real event. So um, we've made cup draws a full screen experience this year and uh, we don't just want it to be a mobile feature that you skip away from. So um, what we did, we added um, a lot of narrative elements that really connected to the rest of the Football Manager world and the rest of your save. So it is something that actually evolves with you as well. So it will reflect your journey and where you started, where you are now, and establish a greater sense of history throughout. So um, you will have more context to the competitions, to the clubs you're facing against, and your own journey. So, um, yeah, and for UEFA, that especially, it is a celebration. We're celebrating cup draws, we're celebrating having the license, and we're celebrating the player. So, um, I think seeing that with the official graphics and logos is going to be even more exciting. Yeah, and there's going to be commentary in that as well, so it's text at the top. So, again, it would be one where I think in the past there might have been certain FM managers who would have gone, okay, well, I'll just find out who it is or just let it happen quickly. People are going to slow down, aren't they, when it comes to the cup draws now? I'd imagine so, yeah. I mean, the, the pace of it, it's still your choosing. There will be an element that happens. If you were to leave it, it will happen by itself. But there's also ability to go through at your pace if you're someone that might want to go a bit quicker. Um, but the, I mean, to mention the cup draws as well, it was, it's at all three of those levels of the, Conference League, Europa League and Champions League. And I think that's something that separates what we do with Football Manager that might be different to other games where you immediately want to go to the, the top level and try and do everything at the best you can. Like to have even your first season in QPR Manager <laughs> in, the, in would might be a Conference League, but would be the first time you're in Europe. We want to make sure that feels as special because it's the first time there. And then the following season, then it's Europa League and then maybe your fourth, fifth season is when you're looking at, okay, now it's Champions League glory. But each time it feels increasingly more special and at every level has been sort of catered for as well. Mm. Um, I guess you've played the game as well. How has that, how has that felt, play, playing the game? D does it feel that little bit different? Because I think a lot of people, myself certainly, were ex well, as soon as I saw that, I was really, really excited. The visual elements of the in-stadium in were the big ones for me. Um, cup draws was something that I'm going to be more introduced to this year because I was one of those users that just sort of skips through it, doesn't, doesn't worry too much, but now I'm going to make sure to spend time with it. Future me as a manager, when I hopefully get QPR to that point, I, I, I thank you both for that. Uh, thanks for spending a bit of time and, and chatting to me about it. I'm, I'm excited to, to get into the Champions League. Fans make football and in FM23, their voices are being represented by the new supporter confidence feature. To help me bring a bit of French sophistication and just to explain this whole process is lead game designer Remy. Thank you for sitting down. We've had a chat about all sorts already before we started rolling here, but I'm so excited to talk about this supporter confidence. I say excited. As a, as a manager in the game myself, I've had some moments with the fans over the years. So um, it also brings a little bit of nerves for me and I imagine it will do for for fans playing the game this year as well. Um, first of all, explain to me what the supporter confidence feature is. Well, Football Manager is very much about stories, right? The, the stories that you tell yourself, the choices that you make all throughout the game. Um, and, uh, but it's, these stories are not specifically about matches, not specifically about players. It's, they are about the world of football. And uh, when uh, the design team really evaluated what was in and uh, trying to amplify the stories that, that were already created by the players. Um, the rationale here was uh, fans are a big, big part of football, um, but they are not really a big part of the game yet. And uh, this is something that we should probably work on, and this is what we did. Mm. So um, it was really about um, making sure that, that fans were represented in uh, in one way, 
um, but that would also impact directly the, the, the gameplay of the game and, and your choices. And, and visually, literally, you know, as you see it within the game, how did you come up with that, that visual representation of it? So in the game, you're really, you're going to be able to see the breakdown of that fan base uh, directly on screen. Um, so you know, when you're making the, the choice of which club you're going to manage, you're going to see like what, what's the proportion of, of casual, hardcore, more fair weather type of, of, of fans as well. Um, and so uh, this is something that, that you're going to be like really just, just look at it in terms of percentages and, and breakdown and uh, how it impacts your gameplay. So the research team tried to be really as true as possible to, uh, to reality and really trying to capture the, uh, the essence of, of clubs, of leagues and of nations as well. We know that football have a vastly different cultural impact in different countries. The research team really tried to, to, to capture all of these uh, key differences with um, some uh, parts of the research that will be directly exposed in the, in the game with the different supporter profiles that you're going to see uh, and also some, um, uh, some behind the scene attributes that, uh, that, we're going to, uh, uh, that we're going to use to base our uh, systems. So, how much of an influence uh, do your fans, do your fans have on the boards? Uh, how much of an influence they have on your job security as well? How, um, how patient are they with your choices? How passionate are they uh, with them as well? Um, there are some, 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 some bits uh, here and there that um, in the future team we can, we can use uh, to really build the best and the most interesting features that, uh, that we can. In your first, this is your first game, right? How do you feel about this in the fact that are you going to lose, are you going to make people lose their jobs? That's, that's, that's going to be on you. Are you going to be okay with that this year? <laughs> so that's or, will it, or will it allow people to keep their jobs? So that's the two sides of the coin, right? So um, the fans will have a, a big say about your job security, but it's depending on, on, that, uh, on, on the club uh, that, you're, that you're managing. But yes, uh, that's what I'm most excited about is that, well, you know, when, when we're working on a, on, a, on a new feature, we are also trying to um, assess what is the story that we're, that we're trying to tell, um, but also what impact does it have on the actual gameplay, on your choices. And um, here, they will definitely have an impact. And it's one of the most, um, it's one of the most crucial system that we have in the game, right? It's, it's your ability to keep your job and to, to keep managing the club that, uh, that you like. And uh, essentially, if you're ignoring the fans where uh, they have a huge influence on the board, yes, that might uh, put you in, in trouble. One of the most visual additions to FM23 is the dynamic manager timeline. Ali Skews, the junior game designer, joins me now uh, to talk through this. As we said, very, very visual element of the game this year. Tell me about it. Yeah, so um, basically what dynamic manager timeline is, is reframing what we consider milestones and achievements to be in FM. So right now it's a list of very objective milestones and achievements, so like winning the league, um, winning manager of the month. We got all those kind of objective lists there. We wanted to include the subjective elements. Um, those are what really defined the story. So we really wanted to reinforce those storytelling elements um, and really highlight to a player that every save is unique to them, really. So what can you expect to see in terms of this element? And when, when does it sort of a, a arrive in, within the game? Yeah, so it comes in the end of season review. Uh, when we kind of talked about it, we, we were looking at what really we consider our, to be our favorite things in Football Manager. So like signing a bargain player or integrating a, a new gen from the youth team. These are the things that like really excite us mm. when we're making the game. And we wanted to have like a physical representation of that. So this is a kind of a new way of uh, evoking some nostalgia, I would imagine. Because also, I guess, in terms of, you know, if it's one year, there's gonna, there's gonna be so much that sort of com comes at you. But once you've been, managing 20 years. I don't know what your PV is in terms of how many seasons you've done on Football Manager, but as that goes along, that, that dynamic timeline is going to look pretty, pretty extensive. What will be included and, and what won't? Yeah, like nostalgia is a great word for it. I think whenever I'm chatting to my friends about Football Manager, we're not talking about how many times we've won the league. It's always about 
these like special players that you've grown affection for or the time that you beat your, your rival 5-0 after you know, four years of not doing so. So th those are the things we really wanted to highlight, those kind of special, unique moments in your save um, that you, you kind of don't really see much in the game. You don't really get a pat on the back for signing a bargain player, but it means so much to you when you're doing it. Is the aim really just to kind of offer up a bit of yeah, the nostalgia and light uh, when you're sort of not in the grind of your, of your FM save, but just that moment to step back and see what you've achieved along the way. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, we really want to give that sense of scale. We want to show you like where you've come from to where you've ended up um, and show you that it's about like the journey to get there rather than the actual destination. Um, I think that's what I always look, look back on and enjoy looking at. And in that save, I'd imagine there's you know memorable moments, but memorable players as well. Who's who's the guy? Who was the guy in that save? The guy for me it was Filipe Greco, who played as a number ten. I think he had like eighteen techniques, so he was just like a beautiful player to watch. Um, and yeah, this is the great thing about it. You have when you have these kind of wonder kids who perform miracles for you, you see that reflected on the timeline. You know, if they're breaking records, if they're the youngest player to ever score for your club, you'll see that represented, and you can look back on it and remember where where Philippe Greco started from, really. Yeah, yeah, and keep an eye on him, I guess, as well. Exactly, yeah. This is lovely, isn't it? I think the dynamic manager timeline, I think it allows us, we've, we've spoken about so much, and you know, you like getting into the weeds of recruitment or AI or the match engine, but this is kind of, this is where we want everyone who's on FM, they want to get to this point where they've got a nice dynamic manager timeline to look at and, and enjoy those great moments. Thanks so much for chatting with me, Alia. Loved it. No worries, great. So there we have it. Five key headline feature areas delivered from the studio itself. But it doesn't stop there. The Football Manager team will be providing even more detail on these additions, as well as other improved gameplay areas in the coming days and weeks across the website and exclusive members hub, FMFC. So sign up and keep an eye on their socials for updates. Football Manager 2023 is released worldwide on November the 8th. And if you pre-purchase now on PC or Mac, you can secure 20% off and early access. All details are in the description below. Thank you for joining me. I've had a blast and can't wait to get managing.